We're live in the studio. Welcome to Fast Cats Training Tips Podcast. I am the big cat, Frank Overton, with my co-host, Jackson Long. Hello, everybody. I'm here again. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, this is a special podcast. I know we said that last time, but this one really is. We are doing also a YouTube video podcast with this one. What's up? We're Be- filming it. Because what we're talking about today is how to crush. And a how lot of the information that we are presenting to you um, is visual. We are going to show you, show you everything about the Tusher and the Crusher race course. We're going to show you the feed zones, the climbs. We're going to show you where you might, uh, you know, better watch out for flatting, where it's high speed, where it's going to be really slow. We'll point out where the Sarlock pit is. Um, we're just going to walk through the race and, you know, kind of from mile zero to mile 70 and, and everything that uh, you're going to face, uh, it's a week from tomorrow. Yeah. And it's, it, I think it's a, it's especially cool because you and I are both doing it. You've done it many times. I've done it zero times <laughs> and we're a week out. And so we just thought it would be a good podcast to do, to share Frank's wisdom and just talk about the race to ho- hopefully give all of you out there that are either doing the crusher this year or want to do it someday, Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more Intel on, on what to expect. Yeah. As long as Bert keeps the course the same as he's done since 2013, you know, this is this podcast and video will live on for future generations. (laughs) (laughs) I'll grow old with my beard and (laughs) <laughs> Back in the day, though, uh, Burke would switch up the courses, oh, really? I think, because that was always the question, what's, what course are we going to use? But I think this one is the the one that he's finally settled on. So, um, yeah, this would be good for, for all years. So, yeah, definitely if you're listening to the audio-only version, like on the normal podcast, we highly recommend also going and checking out the YouTube version because mm-hmm. we're going to be doing some screen recording, some more visual stuff of like looking at the course maps and, you know, some training peaks data and, and stuff just to give a little, that little bit of extra, uh, you know, insight into, to what it is. So that's why we're doing the video version too. But I mean, I think you'll still obviously get a lot out of just listening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So much of what we have to present to you, um, with the elevation, um, power, heart rate, the, the GPS, um, stuff, it, it, you can talk about it, you know, at length, but when you see it, that's when it's really going to make sense. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So for all those doing the, the crush and the tusher, all 600 of us, um, we hope you like this and enjoy what we're really going over is, you know, what, what to expect, probably some nutrition and hydration, uh, strategies, tips, um, things about the aid stations and, uh, yeah, we should just get into it. Let's jump in. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I am going to start talking about the uh, the 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 touch on the crusher, like the distance and elevation profile. So, um, if you follow my cursor, what is happening on our? I have to press record. Again. Oh yeah, here we're gonna hit record. <laughs> this is the first time we're doing this. There we go. Okay, so what you see here is. Uh, you know, two one hour climbs and hopefully you can follow my cursor cursor. But, um, you know, we start in the little town of Beaver and then this is the first climb. Then you go down this climb and this is around the, the town of Circleville. And I think it's called also called junction. This is the, uh, Sarlacc pit. We'll come back to that. This is the infamous cold crusher. And, uh, the KOM is right here. But when you come to this section, you're going to be deeply disappointed because it's not the end of climbing. <laughs> yeah, that looks like there's still a lot of climbing left. <laughs> it is rude. I, the first year I came to this section and I rounded the bend, you go around a bend, and it was just pointed straight up. I was so mad. Well, that's interesting because they have, isn't there, isn't there like a cash prize for the first like male and female to the KOM? I think so. So yeah. like, yeah. so everyone's just going to be going full gas and then there's still plenty. Of Everyone climbing. knows there's no full gas. Okay. It, 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 let's go to the 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 um training peaks data because this really um captures it a little bit better cuz you get elevation and the map all in one view so if you follow 
the my cursor on the the top pane here this is power in and pink um elevation is uh in gray and heart rates in red we can get rid of heart rate here so the race starts in in beaver here we are here and um for those of you who've never done it the first um first 11 miles are uh paved so you go all the way to this turn here and uh Let's see, last year that was like uh, 33 minutes. So here's what's going to happen in this first 33 minutes, depending on which age group you start in. You want to be able to draft and ride in a pack. So this is, um, if you've done a group ride on road bikes, this is what it's like. The, you know, it's shoulder to shoulder, uh, yellow line to the edge of the road. You're riding in the pack. And generally what you want to do here is as little as possible to keep up with the pack. Um, in this edition, I did, um, 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 277 watts. Somehow that wound up being pretty hard. I, um, in, in other years, I have, I have three years of data oh, <laughs> up here. So let's go back to 2013. I only had to do 200 watts. So the pace was very chill. Um, so that, that, that's the point of me pulling up this. Um, oh, wow. so that's a big difference. You know, the, the situation was different. They started us um, right behind the pro men and women. And we were just, everyone in the bunch was pretty cool with just rolling along and saving as much energy until the, the right hand turn. But in this file, um, this one here, I this was last year. No, uh, 2016. I do recall. So the, now I know what happened. There was a uh, there was a couple of guys that were working for another guy, and they drilled it at the beginning, and we caught up. We we staged behind uh, the the twenties, the thirties, and the forty forty fours, and we so we rode up through all those fields and the like the just the everyone was like super aggro and um there was a guy i heard he was working for another teammate he wanted to make it really hard and soften up the field <laughs> and uh i think that guy stopped after the top of the first climb oh. so that guy like sacrificed himself it was single file for a lot that's why we went pretty fast oh, okay. and in 2017 last year we did uh, two, so it was a little more tame. So last year, two thousand, I did two hundred and thirty-one watts, which was like, like a easy tempo. Yeah. What you want to be doing here is make sure you always have a wheel. Um, drafting is going to be thirty percent easier. Um, I was just concentrating on trying to relax, eat and drink. There's a lot of uh, shuffling around of um, where you were. One minute you'd be at the front of the field. Next minute, you'd be like midway back. So you kind of had to cycle through that just yeah. to stay up front. But um, it didn't really matter too much. But um, what you want to do is, uh, for, first of all, I'd recommend to everyone a display distance and elevation on their computer. Um, and distance is going to be really helpful because you know this race is 70 miles. And then you know, if you follow my cursor here, about... 10 miles into the course from from here to here right at this this turn right here that that's when you that it it chills out for these 10 miles but then when you turn right it's game on and that, so you're already climbing when you're still on the pavement yeah it doesn't really feel like okay. climbing it's um if you look at this this data this is a uh 2% grade but okay. really Bef the first seven miles is like a 1.5% grade. It's, a, it's, it, it's very fast. If you're drafting, it doesn't feel like climbing okay. at all. It's little ring, pr pretty chill. It gets kind of steep in the last mile. And then when you turn right, when you turn right here, if, let's blow this up. It goes from this paved road here. And then you're going to turn right and it goes to dirt. And uh, right here... Right here, at this first bend, you so you turn here. Yeah. This get this is dirt. Right here at this bend, right here, 
where I am on this power data file. Look, you're going to go from oh, yeah, you spike, here. You spike it. That's when you give it. That's, <laughs> that's when the climb goes to... So it, seven percent so simultaneously pitches up and turns to dirt. Yeah, more or less. Okay. Yep. Simultaneously pitches to dirt and goes up. And when you go around this bend here, that's when you're going to get that first feeling of how's this race going to go, because you're chilling the first thirty minutes. And I remember being nervous and coming up to this section, and then um, I went around this bend. And the year that I won it in 2013. I was like, is that it? You know, this is no big deal. And I, it was hard, but it wasn't like I was struggling hard and no one was in front of me. And I was actually pushing the pace and I turned around and there's like four guys behind me. But last year, um, there was a, it, it was hard. You're giving it. I was doing 308 watts here for about 22 minutes. And that was, that was hard. Um, but the cool thing about that was I was uh, up in front and I was in a I was in a controlled fashion. For those of you that transition from the the pavement to the dirt and you come across that first steep section, the the first climb is going to be. Um, so you're going to go from mile ten to mile eighteen, essentially where the first feed zone is. So that's like eight miles of up and. Uh, you know, it could take anywhere from, this was 41 minutes. It could take anywhere from 35 in the pro field to an hour, um, you know, in, in a lower category amateurs. So be ready. That is, you got to go hard, but you probably should not go full gas hard. If you go full gas hard, um, it's going to, you're going to pay pay for it up the call to crusher later on. And, uh, the reason, so, um, I always tell people, uh, why is this like this? I always tell people, um, um, it, if you have to go full gas up the first climb, um, you're going to spend so much of your energy that is going to come back and, and you're just going to suck, um, up the second climb. So, um, save some if you have the ability to just keep your ego in check and maybe um ride up at your own pace at like 95 percent it's going to pay um pay off later up the call to crusher and we'll, we'll come into that so it kind of it looks like it it sort of goes up and there's like this so then that's where the first feed zone is where it sort of crests down and then you keep going up so there's like a little bit of a descent be yeah okay before the big descent Yes, correct. So um, if you look at my cursor here, there's this little little, uh, little descent here. It feels really good. And um, you're, if you look at the, where the GPS is um, and also here, what we're talking about is this section here. It's aid station number one at mile 18. Okay, so you, you come down this nice little descent. I was with uh, two other guys last year. It was the first chance where I had to soft pedal. And it felt really good. I got a little bit of recovery. And then um, then you come into the aid station. And so what I recommend, that is, how far into the race is that in minutes? That is uh, in 75 minutes into the race. So here's the scoop. 75 minutes in for a race this long and this hard, you need to have already consumed two bottles at that point. So what I what I think uh, is a good hydration strategy is to break this up into two parts. So you start the race with two bottles, right? Your first bottle goes in your in your mouth before you turn onto the dirt, right? Then your second bottle uh, you need to just sip on it for the next forty minutes, which is going to be hard because you're going to be breathing really heavily. But what you want to do um, as soon as you get to aid station number one at mile eighteen chuck both those bottles to the volunteers so that they can uh, recycle them properly, but take two hand ups. And I think that's really important to um, take two, not just one. And um, do you think it's worth bringing a third bottle in your pocket or like it? I mean, cause I, I, the race starts at what? 8 AM or so. Correct. So it's probably not going to be terribly hot, right? But it's yeah. usually kind of cool. It's like in the sixties. Yeah. Well, here's the deal with the third bottle. 
um, a bottle weighs about a pound. Yeah. You got to lug that up the climb. Yeah. So the, due to the fact that the, this feed zone is pretty, pretty slow, the volunteers are amazing at this race. There's probably 15 going through here and, uh, they'll hand, you can take one at the beginning and one at the, the middle or end. So then you got two, right? And then those two bottles are going to sustain you from mile 18 all the way down to a uh, junction at mile 38, which is aid station number three. Now here's the scoop. The reason why you want to do that aid station, um, at mile 27 is right here. And you've been going downhill. Guess what you're doing at mile 27? Not grabbing bottles. Probably about 35 <laughs> miles an hour. You're going fast. It, there's no time to uh, grab bottles. Although you may be able to, but you know how like taking a fast feed is really difficult? Sometimes you drop it. It's high probability that you might yeah. do that here because you're hauling ass. If you're coming off of the climb, you're probably trying to catch back on to some guys and um, so you're giving it, and it's not really a good time to take a feed. The reason why they have the feed here at mile 27, it really serves when you come back up at mile uh, mile 59. Okay. Because um, that's it's, it's the backside of the crest. Yeah, yeah, you go past that part of the course twice, so it's really to serve the um, when you're coming back the other way really slow. So take two bottles at aid station number one, and then you have uh, um. Uh, so 18 to 22, 23 miles. So you got about five more miles of climbing. This is not that hard. Um, it's a, it's at a 2.7% grade. So a lot shallower. It really helps if you're with a group of guys here, if not for the drafting, just for the, the, have that carrot and the pacing. Um, so, so you got that going for you. When you get to this section, this section right here is where I flatted this last year. Mm. It was a sidewall flat and everyone knows. So if you look on the map down here, um, this is the junction right here. So the junction there's on the way back at the end of the race, you're going to be going, um, this way. Okay. So you go past that and it's super high speed. It's dead straight. Um, this, this little section right here. Uh, let's look at my average speed last what's year. The... Speed last year was 35 miles an hour. Minus 3.6% grade. Yeah. The thing is, the gravel is... It, it, up up top, this is high alpine. It's like yeah. hard pack. There's rocks embedded in the, in the road, but it's no big deal to pick your way through them. Here, the gravel changes consistencies, and it is more less hard pack dirt and more like... You know how like they they take gravel and actually lay it down on the road. Yeah, it's more like that. Uh -huh. So it's a little bit soft, and so your tires actually go down in it. This is the place where people's water bottles are ejecting. Yeah, um, it's pretty washboard in this section. Not washboarded uh -huh. at all because it's that deep rock gravel. Uh -huh. And uh, but it, so are you kind of like it's a little squirrely, squirreling around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you really have to stay like on it there and there's really nothing to dodge i wasn't there was nothing to dodge last year you're just kind of like holding on praying that you're hoping not slice it yeah wall. and i've done the same thing the other two years and came out unscathed and um but yeah at the bottom of this descent right at the junction at the second feed zone there's always a guy or two and uh you know fixing a flat and that was me last year so um this was from 2016. Thankfully, I didn't flat there, but I still went 35 miles an hour. So when, if you have the app, if you get to Beaver in advance on Friday, if you're checking out the course, go check out this section. It's um, high speed, um, loose dirt gravel. So I actually, that's why I switched tires this year is that sidewall protection. So then you, you come through here, it kind of sort of levels out, but you got a, a ton of momentum you can see my power go back up here but it's really not that hard at this point you're just thankful you've done the first climb and you're kind of getting ready for this descent and so here this is the call to crusher this thing see where there's barely any power output here <laughs> yeah um there's not let's let's pull up speed here 
speed. Boom. Okay, so it's really not that fast. What what you see so it's here technical. is technical. You go through all these. Let's switch blow this backs. up. All these switchbacks. Oh yeah. So one thing to be um, aware of. So you're hauling ass, hauling ass down here. This is your first switchback. Um, this is also where that DNA. This is the top of the KOM. Okay. So you go around this bin. You go around this bin. And uh, that's, so that's pretty slow. You're not going to win the race here. You could lose it if you uh, deck it, deck it, you know, <laughs> take a soil sample. Um, but then it's wide open here. This is pretty fast. Th this, this is a sharp one. It's super washboardy. You're, I mean, it felt like my wrists were going to break <laughs> holding on to the bars. It's high speed washboardy. It's nasty road. Nothing, nothing good about this on the way down. It's hard. Um, the dude, if you're with a mountain biker and he's got front suspension, ignore them because they're going to rip this section. And the reason why you can ignore them is see this sewer speed goes way up. Oh yeah. You know what this is? This is where it turns to pavement. Really? Yeah, dog. So you Whoa. go down this last climb here, you hit the, see this, yeah, this is that turn. dirt to pavement and then it's pavement for a long while, but see how the speed is nice and high. Yeah. I was just catching back on to other guys. Low watts, 38 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah, you're you're ripping it. Um, and the the year that I won it, um, I was with a mountain biker and one other dude, and I started to cramp up going down the call to crusher. My my calves cramped up, and then I got to this section and I cramped up some more, and I'm like up oh, okay there's there goes the race but it's so fast and the long out the run out is so long this was four minutes and 41 seconds there's plenty of time to catch the guy that's got 30 seconds on you on the dirt so how long is the full descent well let's look if you look at here <clears throat> this is uh mile 37 and you know you're at mile 26 so how long does it take Let's look at the data. It took 20 minutes. Okay. So 20 minutes. It is a rugged 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, but it's recovery, basically, because you're not really putting out too many watts. Physiologically, it's recovery. Mentally, it's yeah. uh, far from it. You got to, you, you're on it. It's, it's um, difficult. You got to, you, you know, Avoid the rocks. You got to get back on it. Usually right in through here, you're kind of in a flight or fight mode to kind of catch the guys back up here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it's like, it's 20 minutes. It's pretty long. There's no chance to grab a, like use a water bottle. Yeah. If you had a camelback, use it there because it's two hands on the bar, mm -hmm. death grip. Um, it So, which brings me to the, my next point. This, when you come into the town of Junction at mile 38, you absolutely have to get a feed here. So what you want to do, your two bottles here, you need to have drank them by the time you get to mile 38. So really, it's mostly going to be done up here because you're not going to be drinking here and here. But when you get to this pavement, what you can do, have one bottle on this section. And then when you get to the pavement, just start like finishing what you haven't. And then you come into here. There's a, a quick, there's a right left and then there's a well-stocked station here since it is kind of high speed it's a one bottle one yeah. bottle feed um so that's the town of of junction and uh so you just go through there it's very small you're in and out in like a minute and then you hit the highway right and the highway section is and so all of this is still paved yes all still paved okay. so this highway section 22 minutes, about seven, eight miles, all paved. And um, there's rumble strips. And um, it's best if you can... Watch out, kitty. <laughs> Our cat is coming up on the... Uh, he's checking out the camera. I think he's checking out the, the microphone on there. He's like, what is oh, that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's best if you can uh, get in a group. Man. Hello, kitty. Um get in a group and, and work together and draft. If you have to do that section on your own, ugh, I've never done it on my own. 
I would sit up and wait for a group behind me if I had to do it on my own. I really mm-hmm. would. It's that much energy expenditure for what you got coming to you. Yeah. Your mindset going from the pavement from here, from the uh, when you start the pavement from here, for the next hour, your mindset is eat, drink, and conserve energy. Actually, it's 37 minutes. It's about 15 miles. But your mindset is uh, draft, energy conservation, work with the group of people you're in with. I don't think this is a place to really chase too hard because you got to save some for what's coming up. But um, don't be that guy like hanging on, like take your pulls in a group. Um, yeah, share the workload and uh, it, it kind of be a team player because that'll help your overall time. But it's really eat and drink. So tons of water. That's when you break up into your whole food. You've probably been doing <clears throat> gels up until then um, at the early part of the course or blocks. But when you get down into junction, um, yeah, bust out like a bar, whole foods or blocks or something. Waffles. Waffles, yes. Um, yeah, that would be really good. And then when you come to mile, mile, this right hand turn, this is where you leave the the um, the highway road at mile forty three ish, and you turn right. There is this little town. They come out and they cheer you on, all the people do. Wow. And last year there was these saints right there with uh, bottled water. Really? Take one. Yeah. And they were there and I took a uh, bottled water. And um, yeah, and uh, half of it went on the back of my neck because it was really hot and half went, you know, I chug a lugged. And then you, this section, this dead straight section from here to here, um, yeah, you're usually going to be with a group and you're just rotating and don't do too much there. Just conserve. And then when you turn left off this dead straight section here, this is this is the Sarlacc pit, y'all. This is the hard stuff. It is golf cart path wide. There's scrub brush on either side. There's no trees. There's it's there's no It's like desert. Desert. Yes, there's scrub brush. Let's look at the temperature. Oh. Boom. So it goes from eighty eight up to ninety nine oh. by the end of the Sarlock pit. Oh my God. It's this red dirt. It's like it's you're on Mars and it's very soft and your tires squish into it. The rolling resistance is extremely high. So I always have trouble. You're going from pavement to fast dirt to this left-hand turn here and your rolling resistance goes up enormous. So you have to kind of change your rhythm of how you're pedaling. And not only that, it's at a, it's at just enough of a climb it's like this slow motion climb. It's a 5% grade and you have to, there's a line and you have to weave around the rocks. And, um, is it like, is it like deep gravel or it's, sand? It's this, it's this red Mar Martian, but like, you're not like, dirt. you're not like squirreling around really in some places. Oh, okay. Yes. It's like pedaling through a sand tra- trap, okay. extremely high rolling resistance. And, uh, that it's just a it's a tough transition. It's hot, and it, and the reason why I mention it is I'm not trying to scare anyone off or anything, but I really think that's the place that requires some of the greatest mental toughness. You, it sucks. It sucks for everyone. You just got to get through it. It's hard. Um, it's that challenging. Took Fifteen minutes for you. Uh, yeah, fifteen minutes. Um, yeah, it's about a little under three miles. It tops off. If you look at the uh, elevation profile right here, it tops off. And last year, 
there was this random dude out there and he had a water spritzer. Oh, really? And you went through his water spritzer and it felt amazing. Hopefully, hey, dude, if you're back, <laughs> I hope so. That felt so good. Um, you know, it's like going through a sprinkler. Yeah. It felt really good. And he, it was like, I was in a world of hurt. And, uh, you, you know, you came to him and he gave you some encouragement. Yeah. And, uh, like, I was about to cry at that point. <laughs> but you go through this, it, uh, this little descent. It's fast. If you're with another dude, you can draft off them. Um, and if they're working hard, you're going to be going fast. And um, so right, right here, do you see where it comes? That you make the complete oval? Yeah. You come back to the road that you are flying down here. Now, this is aid station... Um, number four, it's at mile 51. This is a mandatory two bottle one. This is about your last chance to take on a lot of fluids before you really empty the tank and bring the heat for the call to crusher. Um, it's on a slight downhill. Uh, you're not going to be going too fast, but it's like borderline technical. So you probably, I mean, I have taken one bottle without putting a foot down. Um, but if you're like really suffering there, that might be a, a good point to like put a foot down, take two bottles, maybe chug one and take another one. Cause it's, it's a long, you got the call to crusher coming up. So it's a long haul. Um, but you turn left on the pavement. So you go back up this pavement section, um, right, right here. So that pavement section, it's dead straight. You can see all the people in front of you. You can turn around and see the people behind you. Looks like this is about a mile section. It's uphill um, at 5%, and you just got to start getting in your rhythm. And if you can get in a rhythm on this pavement, hopefully you can carry it with that rhythm as soon as it transitions from the pavement to the dirt. Because when you... Cold to crush time. When you hit this left, this is the cold to crush, and it goes all the way up here. That's the first, that's the KOM. That's the KOM. That's, uh, so four miles. Well, actually the KOM is, uh, it's a 5.2 mile section. It's 8%. So it goes from the, the road when you, you go on the road here to this, there's a, it's a DNA, you know, the sponsor DNA, that's the KOM and they have, uh, they have like water and they have a uh, music playing and water spritzers. Um, it's not a te it's not a feed zone. So, uh, it's a little bit of false advertising, <laughs> but there's people there encouraging you. And the, it's not an aid station. It's not the top of the climb. So be ready to keep going after that. But um, I would expect, you know, the KOM is ignore this 31 minutes. That is ridiculous. It's going to be mostly for most people 40 to, to 75 minutes. Um, people on this, on this climb, people... Um, they stop. There is no shade. There was one, there's one little tree there. And I swear to God, last year, there was three people underneath the, really? this little tree seeking, seeking shade. It's really hot. It's really slow. You know, you've been down it. The, the, the dirt, the stutter bumps are horrendous. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, yeah. uh, it's, yeah, you just your cadence is going to be low. You really can't get out of the saddle. Your tires will slip. What's the so the average per, average grade eight percent? Eight percent. Okay, it's it's a tough one. Um, yeah. The the good news is the pavements or the pavement. The dirt is really bad in the in the switchbacks where the cars chew it up from braking and also accelerating. But um, once you get to this section, um. When the road is pretty straight, it, the cars don't do a lot of uh, stopping and starting, and so the, the the dirt's pretty good, and you can get in a rhythm. Find this a is, good line. Yeah, you if you can just get, find your easiest gear. This is where a thirty four by thirty four gearing, like a one to one, super high gear in the rear. Um, just find that and just pedal, pedal, pedal. Like high cadence will get you up there. Um, and it, but it's still going to be hot. And so just prepare for that. This is where you want to drink all the water bottles you have, because you do know this is mile 59. This is your, uh, final aid station. It's at this junction here where, um, you've come down before. So this is the second time you've passed it, but that's, they have Coke, Coca-Cola there. 
they have one bottle from this section you got about another 10 miles so it's really only a one one bottle proposition and uh but it's kind of up and down it looks like it is so you go through this feed zone you get a little bit of downhill which feels amazing and then you come around the bend and you face this climb and you're just like <laughs> what is this but just grunt up it, get up it. When you get up to here at about mile 62, now you're wide open. And and look at this. I'm going to just show you how straight the section is. Now, this is high alpine meadows. You're at like uh, 9,100 feet. Um, now you're heading towards the ski resort. There's um, you, You've left the forest. There's uh, It's like dead straight. And the grout, it's kind of gravelly slash hard packed dirt. The rolling resistance is fairly high. No chance of flatting here, really, because your speeds are much slower. Um, if you're with a group, you definitely want to be working together. Uh, this is where people that have done the call um, may be cramping up. People, you know, you, you know, avoid cramping up on the call, but if you can get to here, um, you're so close. So just keep yeah. those legs turning. Um, yeah, and that you get some downhill and then there's some uphill. So it's rolly. Once you get to this section at mile, mile 64, go ahead and set your lap distance on your timers. When you get to mile 64, you're almost there. The only thing you have left is a couple of grunter climbs, but you have this downhill descent and it's, it's pretty fun. It's gravel. There's a couple of sweeper turns, but you can get get pretty rowdy in there. Um, you're you're going down to the road, and uh, when you get to the bottom of this climb here, now you're on the road, right? So and this is back, back to, to pavement. pavement. Okay. This is the kind of situation when you get to here, you kind of hope you're by yourself, because if you really have to go hard from here to beat whoever you're with. It's going to hurt a lot. Yeah. Um, but if you are, uh, you got this final little section to uh, negotiate. This is where Bert puts the picture of himself on the side of the climb <laughs> with the devil eyes. It's like, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah he makes it like super sadistic. But um, yeah, so uh, you, you, from this point. Um, it's not, there's not much left, but yeah. you still have to like, if you're in a group. Mm -hmm. you sort of have to save a little bit for that last little kicker. Yeah. The last little kicker is all of. Cause that's where you see that the, the pictures of where the, you know, the finish line thing is uh -huh. where people are just grinding up that last paved section. Yeah. yeah. You, what you are, you're turning off the road, um, onto the ski resort. It's like a driveway. Essentially yeah. it's 0.8 miles. Took me seven minutes. Uh, it's gnar. It's 7%, but it feels like 10 and um yeah you just it's it, it it's it it's hurtful <laughs> so make sure you make this turn i heard a story of one um athlete they said they did not get turned right and they went downhill and uh they had to turn around and go back up oh. and i had like 10 minutes of climbing so so there's that but really once you get to mile 64 and a half you're pretty much done with all the the hard stuff but going back to the call like this is this makes or breaks your race, and so um, in this edition, I think I did it in like forty-seven minutes. That was good for essentially fourth place um, in my category that year, and because I had gone full gas here in two thousand sixteen, I went really hard here. I was a little bit cocky, and. Um, I was like determined to stay with these uh, re these guys. That I didn't know how strong they were, so I spent a lot of matches here, and then uh, as a result, I didn't have as much left for the, the call. And I kind of I uh, gave up a couple of places uh, on that climb. It was long, and like people, you can see people coming up to you, and then they go by you, and you just <laughs> you. There's one speed. You really yeah, there's... there's no chance to like mark a move okay. or anything. It's super slow. And it's also, you're suffering big time. So anyway, there's that. And um, 
yeah, you know, grab a grab a bottle here and just empty the tank over the next 10 miles. At that point, I was, you know, for those of you who are doing it for the first time, just start counting down on your your mileage counter because it'll really help because the closer you get um to the to the finish line, you know, you just empty the tank and just give it. Yeah. So that's uh that's my that's my how to crush uh crusher course recon with feed zone and hydration and nutrition tips yeah that's i i mean looking at it on the map is a little bit different i, I I'm, a, I'm sure than than experiencing it uh for for yourself so i'm, I'm a little bit um yeah no i'm excited i think it's gonna be awesome and uh but it looks fun fun type three fun <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a, it, the, the time passes by really quick because you're always doing constant different yeah. things. It's like one minute you're climbing, next minute you're going through a forest and there's this wide open fast descent and then you're riding through the Sarlacc pit. So it's always changing. So it's, it keeps you on your toes. It goes by quick. Yeah. It's the hardest 70 miles you'll ever do. <laughs> it's, there's a lot in there. There's always pedaling and suffering. So it, it's, uh. I think it's one of the best races out there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it from us. I mean, is there any like last minute tips or advice or, or words of encouragement that you have for the race? Hmm. I went in the kitchen this week. Yeah. Uh, big carbohydrate uh, lunch and dinner on Friday. Try to, um, if you get there early enough, see if you can't um, preview one of the climbs. Yeah, where would you suggest doing like some recon, like preview ride? Because it's all, it seems like it's all kind of far out of like Beaver mm. where most people are staying. Yeah. Um, I mean, going up, doing your, knowing where the top of the first climb is visually would really help. But you know, once you're at mile 18, you're, you're to the first feed zone. Yeah. Um, I know people that have like driven the whole course the day before. Um, I don't know if that's, that's, that actually is pretty helpful. The biggest thing on Friday, I think, is to get off your feet, get out of the heat, do as little as possible, um, but make sure you just eat. And uh, for those of you who are traveling, I think the best night of sleep is going to be probably Thursday night. And uh, Friday night, <clears throat> if you ever get the jitters or you get pre-race nerves, it's natural. Um, it's not the end of the world if you get a poor night's sleep, because if you've gotten good sleep all this week, you, you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, breakfast in the morning. <clears throat> uh, I would bring in your own, um, Beavers, a cute little town, but, uh, uh, endurance nutrition breakfast places. They are not, <laughs> uh, same thing for coffee and stuff. Most people are pretty self-sufficient and, uh, Bert throws a really nice catered lunch afterwards. So, uh, count on that. Yeah. That's, that's about all I can think of really all the haze in the barn at this yeah. point. So don't think you're going to go out and make yourself faster when you listen to this podcast, no, you just, uh, just all you have to do is just uh, crush, crush right. on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, cry in the dojo to laugh on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. it's all in your mindset too, y'all. So just be that tough, tenacious some bitch that's uh, gonna finish no matter what. And uh, it's a course that really rewards. At any at any point, you you'll have a bad moment. And every single time I've done it, I've had some really bad moments. And uh, that's important to remember. So don't let that discourage you or get you down. Just keep moving forward and you'll get through it. And then the course will change and throw something different at you and you'll, you'll get back your rhythm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Good luck, everyone. Yeah. I'll be, it, we'll see you there. Yeah. Come up and say hi to us. Yes. All right. We'll see you at the finish line. Peace. <laughs>